Welcome to Melias the Story Collector Web TV, where each week we bring you inspiring stories from courageous individuals about the moments and experiences that have shaped their lives. In this episode, we have the energetic and gorgeous Micah, who is sharing with us what happened when her life fell apart. However, it was an absolutely amazing thing for her because in that falling apart, she found the courage to go against what her head was saying and to truly follow her heart. Yeah, because I noticed that a lot of people um, stay in the zone where they are because they think that that's what society wants them to do. It's pretty normal to follow an, a, a certain path in your life. You, yeah, you're a child, you go to school, you go to university or something else, and then you get a job in that. But it's not always the job you like, and it's not always giving you the life you like. And... Yeah, I see around me a lot of people that stay stuck there and be unhappy and old, not only in a job, but their whole life, relationships and the friends and all the things they do. And they don't know how to turn that around or they think it's not for them to turn it around because, well, this is what we do. This is what is expected of us and we have to keep doing it this way. And I want to show you that you don't have to because, well, if I can do it, someone else can do it too. <laughs> but how did you do it then? Where did this all start? Um, well, I always was a child that wanted to be outside and did a lot of exercising and, and stuff like that. Um, but I could also learn easy. Um, and because I was always also doing what I thought society and my parents expected of me. So I went to university, even though I, in high school, I decided I didn't want to go. <laughs> I even dropped a, um, a size down or something. Um, so I couldn't go there, but I ended up uh, studying law. Um, I became a lawyer, even though after law school, I had to look for a job for two years because no one would hire me because I'm not the lawyer type. <laughs> you don't look <laughs> like a lawyer, I will say that. <laughs> no, and I actually hated it also. <laughs> Yeah, I made a lot of money in it, but I, I hated every day of the job. So, yeah. Um, and the law school was easy um, because I could learn easy, but I knew I never wanted to work in it. I just wanted to go outside and I wanted to talk to people and do nice stuff and go on adventures and really enjoy my life and not being busy with all the rules and how you should be, do things and stuff like that. And, well, I ended up there anyway. So and really I was one of the exact opposite of what a lawyer is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why it cost me two years to find a job. <laughs> it was actually also nice those two years because I I I could go outside a lot because well I had I didn't have any job or something, so I was outside a lot. But yeah, I, I didn't have any money. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So when and did you realize that lawyer, being a lawyer was not for you and that it was time to get out? Yeah, I always knew it wasn't for me. Um, I think I was thinking about it a lot that I wanted to go out, go out of the lawyer job, but I was scared all the time. And I was feeling insecure about myself and about everything. I had a, a relationship for 14 years and I was also very insecure in that. And I felt I was different than other people. I, I didn't belong anywhere. And um, then all of a sudden, all things in my life changed. I was working on it already a little bit, but um, I think um, like eight years ago now, all areas of my life changed. My relationship ended. Um, so I had to go out of the house and, and I, well, I didn't know where to go. And um, my job also ended. So I was, yeah, unemployed also. Um, I was a freelancer, so I didn't get any uh, money from somewhere else or something. I got a new relationship and the same things I did with my old boyfriend did with my new boyfriend, but he reacted differently. So I got more insecure and, mm -hmm. 
yeah, everything went down from there. Um, yeah. I noticed I was almost depressed. Uh, I, I went in um, therapy and they told me, well, if you don't look out now, you're really going to be depressed and you need some medicine. And well, I hate medicine. I'm from healthy food and nature and free stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, my father got sick. He got cancer. Oh, no. um, but everything yeah. happened at once for you, wasn't it? A real wake yeah. up call. Yeah. Yeah. A really wake up call. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then I thought, well, if things can change that fast, I have to do something now. So that's when I started um, looking into what I actually wanted, what was going to make me happy and what was keeping me from being that because I had, I had learned not to follow your heart. I had always learned follow your mind, follow your brain. That's what's important. And if you follow your heart, you're going to get hurt. Um, so I never did that. I, I actually thought I wasn't a feeling type. I did kickboxing and it could, could hit me in the face or something and I wouldn't even feel it like that yeah. bad. <laughs> um, so that was something that was keeping me from being happy because if you don't feel pain, you also can't feel happiness. And, and that's what I learned in the years after that. And the moment I decided I'm going to do something for myself and I'm going to, I love yoga. So I wanted to be a yoga teacher trainer. And um, that was for me the start. I, I knew I could get out of my day job um, and, and do something for myself with the yoga. But then <laughs> something else happened. Um, with kickboxing, I hurt my knee. It, it was an accident. I had two surgeries after that. I couldn't walk anymore. So I couldn't do the yoga teacher training. And wow. then I know. That, mm -hmm. Wow. You really didn't have good luck, did you? No. <laughs> no, but actually I also did. Because through that, I noticed that the yoga and the kickboxing and the running outside and um, going to the gym, that were ways for me to get out of my head, but not in a good way. I was still kind of harsh on myself and hurting myself with that. Yeah. And by the accident and not being able to walk or exercise in any way anymore, I had to find another way. And that was really clearing my mind and find a way to get out of my mind and into my feeling and into my heart space um, without the moving around and exercising and, and pushing through actually yeah so you had no action there you had to do the actual inner work to come back yeah. to your heart and not hide from it anymore yeah and i thought i already did that with all the trainings i did before like nlp and systemic work and um neurolinguistic other stuff and i did a whole lot of other things but well not the things that really helped me like meditation and mindfulness and and going inside myself yeah um that i think a year after that i could walk again and i went on a six-week hike on my own with my dog and my tent and that's why i noticed that um just being outside in nature and going on trips like that and small adventures taught me so much more about myself and how I cope with things and um, how I maybe avoid people or certain people I do go to or certain things I wanted to do but didn't do because I still had some kind of crazy fear or something. And um, I came back different after those six weeks. And then I started the business I have now. Yeah. So what yeah. are you doing now? What, like, what happened in that six weeks that changed everything? Yeah. Before, I also thought I couldn't be alone. <laughs> oh, I okay. actually was being alone. <laughs> yeah. So that was also a big eye-opener, uh, what happened. Um, yeah. I just noticed that being outside there and and also moving around and, and being on your own and uh, letting nature guide you and tell you how you're doing actually i thought well there are so many people that go outside uh, but never know that it can really help you change your life and so many people that go on a journey or travel 
abroad or something and they hope it will change them, but you take yourself with you. And if you go on a journey without having some kind of plan on the forehand, like um, that you know you want to change yourself while you're doing it, you're not going back, coming back changed. So I thought, well, if so many people want to change, but don't know how to, and they, they try it by going outside and going abroad, and, but no one knows really how to, then oh, I can help them with that. So that's, that's what where I, your business came into it then, was it? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do with your business now then? Um, how do you mean that? <laughs> <laughs> so what is your business so you've had this six weeks off you've yeah had this amazing journey all on your own and then you've come back with this idea for a business and helping others yeah how does yeah that, how do you help others yeah um i started to be an outdoor life coach and a mindfulness trainer and i put those things together to um guide people to their heart i help them get out of them their head and into their heart and in the in the feeling in the body actually and i do that um well i go with them if the people live here in holland i go with them on adventures outside we go for a hike and if it's summer then we can go on a pedal board or something um, and if the people live abroad i do that online with them we have chats and i send them outside they have to go on their own <laughs> <laughs> And I have all kind of exercises and meditations for them to do outside. And so they have the same effect, but I can't walk next to them. Um, yeah, um, so I help people actually find the fears and the patterns that are behind their um, actions and why they're not doing what they actually like and help them get into the body so they can feel what makes them happy and what they really want to do. Because otherwise you, you, you make it out of your head and it still is what yeah, you think other people want you to do. Yeah, yeah. I love the fact that you've merged the great outdoors with that life coaching element. Because so yeah. many people aren't making that connection that the two are really connected. Yeah, yeah, they really are. There's so much also what you can see in nature in how, um, well, it's going to, it's spring here now. So everything is blossoming again. And that's also with those people. I, I notice it with myself that if it's winter and it's, if it's dark outside and everything is, yeah, boring, <laughs> <laughs> then I feel more tired myself too. And I want to go inside and inside myself and inside my house and, and pull back from the world around me. And now it's getting spring and you see that the animals are more outside and the baby babies are born and uh the small i think they should do it. <laughs> and the plants are growing and and flowers are coming up and that's the same with us people this is the time where you can find something inside yourself that what do you want to grow this season and every season has its own things for you also to do but also in, in what you see around you, what, what gets your attention and what, and what can that tell you about yourself, what you're working on right now. But it's not a normal way for us to see it that way because we don't learn that. But it's actually a normal way to see it that way, if you know it. It's, it's, um, it's the way we've been, but we're taught not to go that way through the schooling system. It's yeah. like that's not logical, so you shouldn't follow that path. Yeah, Where is yeah, because you have to follow. No, <laughs> no, we don't know. You have to follow that brain, but that brain, um, that brain is molded by everything that happens around you and um, what what people tell you because it it gets all stored inside. There, but your body knows. Your your body knows everything, and we we always tend to look outside for for people to help us. The tell us what we need to do and what's good for us. But your body knows everything is inside yourself. You only have to get it out. So I want to make people happy from the inside out. So they feel happy inside and don't need outside people to make them happy. But also when you are happy inside, it shows out. And I do it with taking them from the inside outside. 
I love it. I love it. And once you've done that inner work, your outside world reflects that. Full life change. Yeah. Yeah. And by doing that, you can also help the people around you with not doing anything because you are happy. It radiates to the people outside. And if you are happy, you have more space for helping other people. And maybe it's helping by just being there if something happens in their life. But if you don't feel happy, you don't have the space to be there for someone else because you have trouble living your own life. If you are, you can be there for other people. So it radiates out to other people also. So if I radiate to five people and they go to five and well, that's, it's good for the whole world. I think (laughs) it's that ripple effect of happiness that happens, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so through this journey, what, what do you feel your definition of courage is? Like um, at what point did you really feel I need to make a choice here and this is the moment? Um, the moment I felt it, um, well, there were different moments I felt it, um, but the moment I felt it the, the most was when my father died one and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. I was already before that when, um, well, so I felt it like three times. The first time was when when all the things changed in my life, like eight years ago. Um, Then I felt, well, I have to start doing something now because otherwise I will keep repeating the same pattern over and over again. Then three years ago when I hurt my knee, I knew, well, okay, I've done a lot of inner work, but I still have to make a bigger change because a couple of things I was still doing the same. Um, Then I changed um, myself more so I could make the business. And one and a half years ago, my father died. Um, And by just being there with him the last six months every day, um, just being in a moment and in the now and enjoying every moment we had, even though we couldn't do anything anymore, um, I realized that it's not important what other people around you are doing or how you should think things are going, um, but you have to enjoy now and you have to live now and not wait until you are 60 or 65 or until something else happened or until whatever, but do it now because it can end like that. And yeah, because, because it ended with him. Yeah. So for you, finding that courage is that courage to live in the moment. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. And do what makes you happy and not what other people, because yeah, that's very hard in this time and age because yeah, you always want to please other people and do what makes them happy and you forget yourself. That's how we taught it to be. Um, But I think it takes a lot of courage to work on yourself and then be in the moment and really follow your own heart and your own happiness in it. <laughs>